Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Meeplus and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at a short collection entitled Maroon Comics, Origins and Destinies, conceived, compiled, and coordinated by Quincy Saul, illustrated by Song Riddle, Mac McGill, Seth Bachman, Hannah Allen, Emmy Kepelter, and Michaela Gonzalez, with selections primarily from the writings of Russell Maroon Schultz and citation from Gunman Joshim Joseph, Adocini, James Coline, Herbert Apthaker, Marvis Campbell, Wade Davis, Dan Hancox, C.L.R. James, Sabu Koso, Butchley, Julius Nayeri, Abdullah Akalan, Richard Price, Juan Manuel Sanchez, Godrillo, and more. Published by PM Press and Eco Socialist Horizon. And to be sure that we are all on the same page here, let's start with a definition from Wikipedia. Maroons are descendants of Africans in the Americas who formed settlements away from New World chattel slavery. Some Africans had escaped from slavery on plantations to form independent communities, but other Maroons had always been free, including those born in such settlements. Maroons often mix with indigenous peoples creating distinctive Creole cultures. And flipping the book over to read the description, red text on a mid-blue gray background that I think was ill-advised, escaping from slavery in the Americas, Maroons made miracles in the mountains, summoned new societies in the swamps, and formed new freedoms in the forest. They didn't just escape and steal from plantations, they also planted and harvested polycultures, they not only fought slavery, but proved its opposite, and for generations they defended it with blood and brilliance. Maroon Comics is a fire on the mountain where maroon words and images meet to tell stories together. Stories of escape and homecoming, exile and belonging, stories that converge on the summits of the human spirit where the most dreadful degradation is overcome by the most daring dignity. Stories of the damned who consecrate their own salvation. Baroon Comics is an invitation to never go back, to join hands and hearts across space and time with the maroons and the mountains that wait their return. As far as the conceiver, compiler, coordinator goes, their PM press bio is as follows. Quincy Saul is a writer, organizer, and musician. He is a columnist for the Africa Report and for Capitalism, Nature, Socialism, where he is also senior editor. He is the author of Reflections of Crisis, the Great Dep Depression of the 21st Century. More of his writings can be found on his blog, Yo No Mi Kayo. After a decade of participation in different social justice movements, he is most recently a co-founder of Eco-Socialist Horizons, for which he is an organizer. As a musician, he is a composer and performer on the clarinet, specializing in improvisation and fusion. He is the co-producer of The Music of Cal Massey, featuring a debut full recording of the historic Black Liberation Movement Suite. He studied political economy, history, and music at Hampshire College, graduating in 2010. He also holds a graduate certificate in labor studies from the City University of New York. A member of Scientific Soul Sessions, he now resides in the occupied territories of the United States. And since I do value own voice pretty highly, I should note that I have no idea about where Quincy Saul is from, or if they identify as black, it would appear not. That said, his bio does seem to point to someone who has spent time digging into an international political struggle, and the rest of the team is much more diverse, so take from that what you will. The PM press bios for the artists that were listed on the website. Seth Bachman is the co-founder of World War III Illustrated. He is the author and illustrator of several graphic books, including You Don't Have to Fuck People Over to Survive and Understanding the Crash plus the previously reviewed War in the Neighborhood that I should repost soon. He has participated in exhibitions at ABC, No Rio, Exit Art, the Museum of Modern Art, and the New Museum of Contemporary Art. His illustrations have appeared in the New York Times, among many other publications. Mac McGill is one of the leading pen and ink artists of NYC. His drawings are known internationally for their formal density and their effective impact. His previous art book includes The Roman Numerals, IX, 
XI, MI. Song Riddle has worked on a number of award-winning film and television productions providing motion graphics and animation as well as script illustrations and storyboards. His illustrations can be found in magazines as well as on book and record covers. And the artist bios only found in the book itself include Michaela Gonzalez, recent graduate of Hampshire College, has dedicated her art studies and activism in western Massachusetts, Mexico and Cuba to artistically spreading awareness, building community, celebrating identity, and creating space for radical collaboration. She sees her art as a tool for approaching liberation. Emmy Kepler is a nihilist, wingnut, and wiener dog lover based in Chicago. And to wrap these bios up, I also just wanted to highlight how PM Press describes themselves since I do think they are worth checking out. PM Press is an independent radical publisher of books and media to educate, entertain, and inspire. Founded in 2007 by a small group of people with decades of publishing media organizing experience, PM Press amplifies the voices of radical authors, artists, and activists. Our aim is to deliver bold political ideas and vital stories to all walks of life and arm the dreamers to demand the impossible. We have sold millions of copies of our books, most often one at a time, face to face. We're old enough to know what we're doing and young enough to know what it's what's at stake. Join us to create a better world. Moving on to my opinions of the art, a couple of different styles are used, but they all fall within average to above what I generally see in political comics. I particularly like the style of Mac McGill, who is the one responsible for the very detailed and textured swirling style. And while this collection is woefully slim, it does manage to cover a lot of important points and point towards five pages of further reading subdivided into 11 categories. The first chapter, Initiation, is a good introduction to who the Maroons are and all the different ways they showed up across what we currently call the Americas. Chapter 2, Slavery and Liberation, really builds on that by digging into the history of slavery and how people have continually resisted and liberated themselves from slavery. Chapter 3, I Am Maroon, profiles a number of individuals through Maroon history and present. I found the profile of Harriet Tubman particularly interesting because of how she is portrayed as a singular in the USA's history, but really fits into a whole pattern of self-liberation that has gone on throughout time. Chapter 4 is the piece by Seth Tabachman that compares and contrasts two forms of movement leadership with the dragon versus the hydra, which certainly has some good pro-anarchism food for thought. Chapter 5 describes how people continue to be modern maroons, and chapter 6 is a blessedly short manifesto from Quincy Saul himself about what he was envisioning. The other term they use is vision, vision quest, which does leave me slightly uncomfortable, but such is life, I guess. While this text will obviously not be interesting to all age levels, I would say that it's a general audience level that's pretty easy to read format and no swearing, nudity, drug use, or gratuitous violence. As far as race, class, and gender goes, I would give this collection top marks. Sexuality wasn't really talked about at all. I'm not sure if it should have been, but it is one of the intersections I like to note, so there it is. Let's all offer some hopes and prayers that this is not a standalone collection, and that at the very least others write further about maroons in the graphic medium. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.